Hey there YouTubers, welcome back. This is Daniel Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. This is lesson 11 of our basic series. Today we're going to be using module 2. Uh, you can use any of them, but we're going to be making a custom function. That's right, you heard me. Um, Excel has a lot of built-in functions. If you click on any cell and type in equals sum, I'm sure everybody's familiar with that. You can get the sum of a large group of numbers. Um, but you can't edit that one. What I'm saying is that we can build our own functions that if the user or our, we ourselves type equals and whatever, uh, then they can do custom functions in Excel. So let's build one here. And by the way, I'm going to rename this from module 2. I'll call this maybe miscellaneous or fu uh, functions or something. You notice if you right click right here, there's nothing that says the properties. So what do you do? Well, I know that you can hit F4 to bring up your properties menu and rename this. However, if you look here in the view, there's your properties window F4. So let's hit escape and F4. Okay, we're going to rename this. We're going to call it miscellaneous. Um, with these, you can't have any spaces. So if you wanted to have another word, you could put an underscore or something like that. We'll just say MISC. And if I, let's see, if I scroll this down a little bit, you'll see that it has been renamed to miscellaneous. All right, first thing off, off the bat is instead of starting out our procedure with a sub you no know, you're going to say function because we're making a brand new function so we got to give it a name our name is well our what's our objective here first of all let's say we are going to try to get the last row in column 1 on whatever page we happen to be on so let's just call it function last row all right, and you put you can put your uh, parentheses like so. So that's the most basic form of starting out a function. You could put variables in here. For example, if one of our arguments was we wanted to put equals last row, and then we wanted to click on a certain row or a cell or something, that would go in here, and we'll do that in more videos. We're going to say function last row, and you know there's no arguments. So in order to get last row, how do we say we do that? We're going to say last row equals, and we're going to take active sheet dot uh, cells rows dot count comma one for the for the column one dot end using XL up dot row. All right, and that, uh, believe it or not, is our new function. Let's try it out and see if it worked. Equals last row. You notice it came up now because it's our new custom function. So I'll close the parentheses. There's no arguments needed and hit enter. 331, well, let's see if that worked. I'm gonna scroll down. Wow, did you look at that? 331 is our last row. Now, we could make a second function if we want to, Alt F11. In our thing here, we could call this function last row uh, C. Let's just say last row C. That means we choose the column. So, this time we're going to need an argument. We're going to say column and let's go ahead and do that now so last row C let's make a little note here I'm going to say this is gives last row of select cell or column let's try this um, we're going to copy and paste this information here. Last row is blah, blah, blah. However, instead of only on column 1, we may want to know what's column B or C or whatever. So, we're going to take the column here. Uh, 
Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to change that to something. We we'll call it uh, selected cell, and we need to we need to declare this as a range. Okay, so I actually paused the video a minute ago because it turns out um, if we don't dim this as a range, uh, then whatever we clicked on inside there is going to take the value. For example, if I clicked here, it would take the value i or a instead of taking the actual cell. And so we're going to need it as a range because we need the range object of dot column. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take whatever the selected cell is, dot column. That's what we want to know, and we'll give it a name. How about SC equals, as in selected column. And now we're going to replace the column with SC. So instead of in column 1, it'll use whatever column we're on. So let's see this in action. I'm going to put a little stop marker there. And we're going to do, and notice I changed this from last row to last row C, because that's our function. And in order to give your function an actual value they're going to plug into the cell, you need to finalize your function with whatever the function name is equals the final result. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this. Equals last row C tab, and we'll click on one of the columns. How about this one? And I'll in parentheses and enter. Now I put a stopper so that we can see this step by step. SC is going to be the selected cell dot column. So you see if I hover over selected cell, sure enough, that's the one we selected. Selected cell dot column equals three, and when I hit F8, it will take that over into the SC. Now last row C is going to be equal to uh, all this but in the column of SC which is the third column right here. Let's hit it. F8. Last row C is 222. Alright, let's see if that's right. 222. Let's see. Oh boy, it sure is. It looks like we stopped early on the dates. If I, let me click that all the way down. And I don't know if our function updated yet. Looks like we'll need to run this one again. It is 331, which is now the end of the range. So check that out. So that's our first lesson in creating a custom function. We created last row, which had no arguments inside. Then we did last row C, which had an argument because we wanted to get the whatever column. Uh, not just only the last row in column 1. And tune in next time, we'll talk about some more custom functions or something of the like.